uh... Hey everybody, Control Alt Bang back yeah. with another outstanding addition to my ever-growing video library. And I'm just going to level with you guys today. I think we all, from time to time, fall victim to a little bit of the Mandela effect, you know? Did Curious George have a tail before 2015 Caitlyn Jenner came by and chopped it off? Who's to say? Did I grow up reading the Berenstein Bears while crying myself to sleep over the sound of the 2008 housing crisis absolutely destroying my parents' marriage? I don't know. Maybe. But I do know one thing for absolutely goddamn sure. Engagement-optimized matchmaking was not around in Call of Duty until 2019. Contrary to what Activision will tell you, you know, EOMM has been around since 2007 with Modern Warfare. No, that, that's a lie. It's all lies. They're lying to you. Now, if you aren't aware, Engagement Optimized Matchmaking, or EOMM as I'm going to call it the rest of the video, is a patented matchmaking infrastructure that is meant to put all players on an even playing field with everyone else. Uh, this takes into account things like ping, player level, win-loss ratio, all that kind of stuff. At least that's what they advertise it as. What they don't advertise is that it also takes into account things like voice chat and whether or not you've purchased bundles from the marketplace. Okay, so here's an example. So if Little Timmy Sweatlord hops into a match with his new Mia Khalifa operator using the newest Kawaii Senpai Tracer Pack, he'll be put into a lobby with myself or someone like me who has never purchased a single DLC item for the game and prioritize his connection while shipping my data packets all across Taiwan and back before reaching the Activision servers. This is meant to allow Little Timmy No Thumbs to dunk on me and make me wonder, hmm, I wonder if I buy those bundles, will I be as good as Timmy? Then I call up my mom from the nursing home, threaten to send her geriatric ass to the front lines of Ukraine unless she gives me her credit card info, and then Activision keeps making money. Simple, right? Now. This has been in Call of Duty ever since they were forced to stop selling loot boxes, in my opinion. Y'all remember those, right? You know, you pay X amount of dollars, you get Y amount of randomized boxes containing anything from weapon skins and variants, all the way to the 74th Minor Attracted Person Pride sticker I've gotten over and over and over and over. Anyway, this practice was openly mocked and recognized as scummy, rightfully so. So Activision made a huge hoopla announcing that they were doing away with all loot boxes, which everyone agreed was... Just a fantastic decision on their part. Great job, Activision. What we didn't know was that something much worse was coming down the pike. With the addition of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, we were all introduced to something much, much worse. Look, now I remember getting home after a long day slinging chicken parmesan at the Olive Garden, contemplating self forever sleep for the 15th time that day, and all I wanted to do was just unwind and turn off my brain for a bit, Play the new Call of Duty that just released. You know, there's a, there's a new graphics engine, okay? There's no more jump packs and slide canceling, you know? And the best part about it, the boys were all on board to play it. And after the first few games, oh, you know, it was fun. But then I started to realize I was starting to die a lot more than I usually do. And I just thought, you know, wow, the, the players are learning the game fast. <laughs> this is going to be a competitive year for COD. Oh, how wrong I was. I just didn't know it yet. You see... In the background of Modern Warfare 2019, the algorithm was hard at work analyzing my playstyle and sorting me into lobbies that slowly eased me into the games where I was effectively just playing against myself. You see, every game was either a narrow win-loss or completely even, my KD ratio hovered right around 1 the entire time, never fluctuating, and I was getting very bored very quickly. But what's even worse than just getting bored, my friends who've been playing Call of Duty with me since 2007 started suffering. A couple of them who decided to, you know, take adulthood to the next level and have kids and didn't have time to spend grinding the game started to fall behind because now they were all playing uber turbo versions who had nothing all day better to do than to just play video games and jerk Cheeto dust into the crotch of their church pants. Come on, daddy. Just, just get a handful for me, please. And this has been the struggle for so many gamers, not just myself, for the past five years of Call of Duty. This year has gotten exceptionally worse, seeing that the entire game is just a copy and paste of last year, so the devs had nothing but time to fix any bugs or glitches or even spend more time ensuring anti-cheat works. Well, they sure shit didn't do that, but they made goddamn sure the marketplace works, thank God, okay? It seems like every day more and more people are waking up to the scummy practices Activision is pumping into this game, and it has all just accumulated in the most recent blog post from Call of Duty, where they finally address EOMM. All right, so this is the graphic posted recently by Call of Duty, and I'm going to break it down for you bit by bit so we can all laugh at this travesty. 
And I'm going to show you guys how the graphics should look after this is done. So if any of you brain dead morons at Activision want to hire me, you can just go to my Indeed and reach me there. All right. First things first, connection. As the community will attest, ping is king. Connection is the most critical and heavily weighted factor in the matchmaking process. Okay, well, Activision, if that's true, why is it that whenever I have a good game, my next match, I'm getting ping around 500? Why is it that matchmaking process takes exceptionally longer in today's recent games than the previous generations combined? Look, if you don't believe me, there's a fantastic video on YouTube. Forgive me, I forgot who made it. But a YouTuber started looking for a match in Modern Warfare 3, the new one, not the old one. And at the same time, booted up a match in different Call of Duties, starting with the original Modern Warfare 2, since those servers were all brought back on Xbox. And then once a lobby was found in the old game, he started searching for the next game chronologically. And I believe he made it all the way from Modern Warfare 2 to COD World War 2. So roughly eight iterations of Call of Duty were able to matchmake before Modern Warfare 3 found its first match. If ping is really the number one priority, games should not be found just... If ping is really the number one priority for Activision right now, games should be found just as quickly as they were in the previous titles. Uh, so next on the graphic, we have time to match, which I'm not even going to address here since that was covered in the last point. I feel like a lot of factors I'm about to address don't need to be explained because they shouldn't be factors in the first place. But I, I digress. The blog post says time to match. This factor is the second most critical in the matchmaking process. We all want to spend time playing the game rather than waiting for the matches to start. Well, hey, you got something right, Activision. Good on you. You want a cookie? Uh, why don't you do something about it, then, if it's that important? Uh, next on the graphic, we have skill and performance. Uh, this is used to give our players, a global community with a wide skill range, the opportunity to have an impact in every match. I'm just going to flat out call bullshit right there. There are countless videos online showing why this system doesn't work and needs to be reversed. They won't flat out say it, but I'm pretty sure this is actually one of the top factors used in deciding which match you get loaded into. I mean, why else would lobbies disband after every match, huh? So they can punish the good players and hold the hands of the shit ones. Uh, next is platform. Not sure why this is a factor since they push so hard for cross-platform connectivity. Seems like a non-issue to me, but hey, what do I know? Uh, then we have voice chat being enabled or disabled. Once again, not sure why that's a factor since everybody either doesn't use a mic or they're just in Discord or console lobbies. Uh, input devices, more of the same with the platform. Not going to touch on that one. Recent maps and modes. Considering maps you have recently played on as well as your game mode preferences, editable and quick play settings. Okay, so obviously they're going to match make based on game modes. If you select TDM, they're going to limit your matches to TDM. Uh, you see, that part makes sense. Nobody's complaining about that aspect of the matchmaking process. Why do you feel the need to include it when you know exactly what answers the players are looking for? All right. Uh, finally, you have playlist diversity. The number of playlists available for players to choose from. Uh, still more of the same from the previous post. We had matchmaking in effect like this back in the OG Call of Duties. It was in the form of a map vote, okay? If the majority of players wanted to play on a specific map offered, they simply voted on it in the lobby screen. You don't need to boot people from matches after every single game to start this fucking process all over again. It's just... It's stupid. God damn, okay. Alright, after the graphic, the blog post goes on to explain... Every time a player begins matchmaking in multiplayer, for example, the process needs to work through all of these factors and find other players as quickly as possible to assemble the lobby that is stable and competitive. My issue here is the lobby is already assembled. Why do you feel the need to kick everybody and start over from scratch? The entire system can be done away with if you just optimize matchmaking by one simple metric, which I will show you right here on the screen. Connection. That should be the only factor. Ping is king. If I'm playing a game here in Arkansas, match me up with other players from Arkansas or Texas or Missouri or wherever is geographically best to provide the most solid connection. And if I want to join a friend's game from across the globe, you know what? I'll suffer the consequence for that. But don't run all these bullshit metrics to try and optimize my playing experience. All it's, go all it's doing is bogging down the game and ruining the fun for everybody. All right, look. I'm going to cut it off here, folks. This was already a longer video than I planned on making, but it's it's just infuriating how these companies create problems and then try and sell us solutions to the problems they created. I've been saying this for years. Call of Duty is dead. And I think this latest installment is just the last nail in the coffin. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think down below. Uh, this has been Control Up Bang. Have a, have a great fucking day, guys.